UFC 304 every single fight breakdown. Here we go. I'm Andy. That's Jim. Welcome to Winning in the Shadows. It is a beautiful Tuesday. We've got some really, really good betting opportunities on this card. Not going to lie. There's a lot of stuff we like. So coming off a one and one week on official play. So blah, blah, get juiced out. But let's talk about this. Jim, Shauna Bannon and Elise Ardeline will uh, apparently get us started here. This was going to be our girl, uh, Ravena, who I really liked over Bannon. Uh, what do you like in Shauna Bannon and Ardeline? Anything? I don't like a lot. <laughs> yeah, I definitely don't like a lot. I think this is... Uh... Look, we know what the UFC wants. The UFC wants Shauna Bannon to get a win. That's what they want. That's why she's here. That's why she's in the UFC and on this card. This girl, Adeline, you know, she's kind of made her name off of being a, a, a celebrity, quote-unquote, or somebody to follow. Um, you know, we saw this the other week with our, our girl from India who had all the fo the followers, and she ended up winning her fight. Um, I don't know what to do with this. I want to say Shauna Bannon is set up to win here, but the question is, can she? Uh, with judging being the way that it is now, and the influence that a live crowd has on a fight, I would lean Shauna Bannon. It has absolutely nothing to do with fighting. <laughs> my, Good. my breakdown has zero to do with fighting. I just think that she will be able to get the benefit of the doubt, it being her home turf. Um, I like the fight to go the distance. I don't see anybody finishing anybody here. It's a bunch of pillow fists. Uh, Bannon's going to stick and move, try to stay off the fence. Uh, so, yeah, maybe fight, fight goes the distance, maybe an over two and a half as a parlay, but I'm not willing to lay it on Shauna Bain, you know, uh, just yet. I need to do a little bit of a deeper dive on, on Adeline here. I, I would just say, don't worry. I have, it, okay. it, it, it's the fight to go. The distance is, is the way to Perfect. play it. I will it, it, something interesting about this fight. So, uh, Shauna Bannon, not too long ago, lost to, uh, Dakota Dichava. And uh, Artelie, did you see who she lost to in 2016? Right? Yeah. Zhang? Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I've looked at Artelie, and I think uh, distance is the way to go. I actually think this could end up getting up, up against the fence and maybe on the ground. Uh, I will tell you, uh, this fight here against uh, Jessica, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that last name. I had an elbow that put a cut across Jessica's forehead. <laughs> that was gnarly. Uh, it was one of those where she hit the elbow and you just – an explosion of blood. It was uh, pretty awesome. But, um, yeah, she's fought a lot of nobodies, and um, I think Bannon is – I actually think Bannon's going to have a little bit of a strength advantage. I think she's going to muscle around a little bit, but I'm not betting on the fight unless it's uh, to go the distance. It's kind of the only way. Mm -hmm. Moving on to Mick Parkin and Lucas Bresky. What do you like about this one? Absolutely love Mick Parkin in this spot. This is – UFC's old used toy, <laughs> Lucas Bresky, <laughs> getting put up against Mick Parkin, somebody they want to push. Parkin's been pre training with Aspinall. Look, if you want to get better, you train with better guys. And he's been at that camp for a while now. Bresky, I think, is just a different fighter without steroids. And I think people are giving him too much of a benefit of the doubt after his last fight. Fraud Walker is so bad. Fraud so checked, bad. Walter Walker. Fraud. I, I have never live bet a fight where it was two <laughs> horrible fighters and been more confident in betting against Walter Walker. Like, I, I had no problem laying a live bet with Bresky in that fight. And they're both horrible. So I think this is Mick Parkin all day and twice on Sunday. I, I just don't see how Bresky wins this fight. Uh, you brought up a great point about Parkin. Yeah, it's his, it's his cardio. Um, so we see him, uh, this fight on <laughs> Contender Series, I have never seen a human being gas out the way Eduardo Neves did. Yeah. Uh, one minute of fury, and <laughs> that was it. He was done. He just kind of rolled over, and that was it. And uh, that's when we found out Parkin trained at the time and still trains with <laughs> really great fighters. And you're like, yeah. what, what, you're like, this guy's training with Aspinall and some of these guys? And... So he goes on, um, beats Pogues, Machado, and Usman. And here's what I love. I think his big advantage is third round. In all three of these UFC fights, he has won round three in every fight on every judge's scorecard. Not one judge in, the, in his UFC career, it's only three fights, has given the opponent round three. 
And that is a big advantage over Bresky, who has absolutely no cardio. You can, I don't, if it goes the distance, I don't even say you pencil in Parkin to win round three. I think you write in pen that he's <laughs> going to win round three. And I think Bresky drops at least round two. Uh, but yeah, Parkin, jab on the feet, moves around. He was a little bit more nimble than I, than I remembered. Uh, mm-hmm. When going back and watching, and I, Bresky's, I don't think Bresky's getting him down on the ground and going to out wrestle him. Not with, not with the way he huffs and puffs at the beginning of round two. So, I think this is kind of a sneaky, like, really gettable, bettable, like parlay piece. It's not even a minus three hundred. Mm-hmm. It's not even close to minus three hundred at the time of recording this. I'm with you. Um, I was really surprised when researching this fight how much I like Park, and so you and I are a lockstep agreement on that one. So. And if you need another parlay piece to put with Mick Parkin, <laughs> we have Sam Patterson and Kiefer Crosby. What do you think about this one? I don't think Kiefer Crosby is supposed to be here. Uh, he's an SBG Ireland guy. That gym is just an absolute train wreck. Uh, it's as much of a train wreck as Conor McGregor's sobriety. Oh, oh. Low-hanging fruit, I know, but too easy. Uh, they're just bad, man. Their game plans are bad. They make no improvements. I haven't seen any improvements in wrestling. I mean, look what they did to Johnny Walker. They turned him into an absolute joke. Not that he was like a title contender, but at least he was exciting. Now he either wins a decision or he gets knocked out and sparked by like a soft punch. Um, I think Sam Patterson moving up in weight was big. That was really, really big. The thing I look for to bet against Sam Patterson and if somebody's got explosive one-punch knockout power and speed and is able to avoid the length of him. And I don't think that's Crosby. Crosby is way hittable. I watched him get absolutely just beat up by, who was it in Bellator? Uh, (laughs) Kelly, was it? Let me me go back. You're talking about Kiefer Crosby? Yeah, Kiefer Crosby. Uh, Charles Leary, he fought Leary, there. Leary, Georgie. yes. So he, he, had, he had Leary on skates and just, he stands there. His head does not move off the center line. And against a guy so big, that is just a bad, bad recipe. He doesn't defend the right hand very well either. He just tucks up and takes it. And we're going to see a big size and power advantage for Patterson. Um, the Patterson submission game is where I'm looking at in this fight. Keeper Crosby has a real bad habit of ducking his head, and Sam Patterson's front choke sequence is very good. Very good. He's got those long arms, very easy to lock up. A guillotine or a Darce choke. Not a jump guillotine, <laughs> but a guillotine. I'd like a standing guillotine from Sam Patterson, uh, and I think he gets Crosby out of here within two. What I really like as a parlay piece besides Patterson is this fight not to go the distance. I don't, I don't see how this fight goes three rounds. No, no, I- no way. Yeah, I think Patterson gets him out of there. Uh, it, going back and watching the last fight. So, first off, Giuseppe doesn't throw a ton of volume. And even in the first round, he had Crosby all beat up and cut and nicked up. Leg kicks were big. Leg kicks were good. When, Giuse- when Giuseppe locked in that choke, it wasn't two seconds later before Crosby won it out of there. Like, he wanted mm-hmm. nothing to do with trying to fight hands, arms. He tapped so quick, and I think it's not going to be too hard for Patterson to get his arms around the neck of Crosby here. Uh, Crosby's getting a nice little paycheck here. I mean, I mean, seriously, Jim, before you said this guy was fighting Aaron Chalmers in the Kingpin PYN high stakes <laughs> tournament. I mean, this guy's not a UFC fighter. Uh, Patterson's going to roll in this one. I feel pretty confident uh, saying that one. Mom and Mikhaev and Manel Kopp. Got some bad blood in this one. Could be exciting. Where are you going with this? This is a bad blood fight that is going to be the worst fight of the night. There's going to be talk. They're going to build you up like these two are going to kill each other. And I think this whole fight is going to be Manal Cape landing one or two shots on the feet and defending takedowns. That's the whole fight. Makayev has been a great fighter to bet on. A great fighter to bet on. But he is as boring as boring can be. And I don't even know if he can do damage with his hands at this point. <laughs> like, it, it, he doesn't go for ground and pound. He goes for the submission game. He does nothing but the control. Uh, the thing is with this is, it's going to be his home turf. So I think the crowd is going to be on the Makayev side. 
which makes me think that these stalling wrestling positions are going to be extended a little bit longer. I don't know if you're going to get the raining down boos from the crowd if he is controlling for three minutes and not much is going on. So, I mean, this is a pretty cut and dry fight. It's going to be damage versus control, right? That's the only way I see it. I think Manel Cape really dropped the ball on his chances to fight for a title. And, boy, if he loses this fight, man, did he really piss away his uh, 2022 and 23 to get yeah. to the title. So, uh, I don't want to see Mikhaev fight for a title. I think he's boring. I don't think either of these guys beats Pantoja. But I'm going to say Mikhaev ekes out a really, really boring lackluster decision to me this is the worst fight on the entire card excitement wise wow i don't I, wow worst we'll, fight on the card you you tell wow. me if you think one's going to be less exciting than this but we like, will even get, the bannon fight. we will get to the main event later jim <laughs> <laughs> very true very true your favorite fighter leon yeah yeah this one's pretty hard for me to bet i can't i can't get there but of 11 and oh we've talked about how he you know he's young and so you'd see really immature moments in Malcolm Gordon. And, he, you know, he got hurt against uh, Philo and mm-hmm. pretty decent win against Tim Elliott. And, yeah, he got the nice win against Alex Perez, who hadn't fought in a couple of years. Uh, I, I have no opinion on this fight. I really – none of these – neither of these guys do it for me. No. We had bet on Cop in his last one against uh, Felipe Dos Santos, and he got the decision, but that was not a confident-looking no. win. I know there was talk of injury – that he was injured coming into that one, but you know, they tried to book him twice against, uh, you know, Mateus Nicolau. So I, I just, I, I, I know betting on Makayev has been profitable, but man, it's not fun. I, I, no. I, I haven't liked it at all. I know it's, I know we always, it's results based, based business. So if you've bet on him, you have won. It's terrifying. <laughs> it's terrifying <laughs> when it's round three and you're like, the other guy has not one Nick on his face because there's not been any damage done uh, with it. So it's probably Mikhaev, but there's there's bigger fish to fry uh, on this card. So <clears throat> if you guys could hit the like button, helps us out, leave us a comment, tell us who you like, and don't forget to jump over and join our Discord. Uh, free, a lot of free plays, uh, a lot of good discussion there. Uh, a lot of talk about the, the Jake Paul, Mike Perry uh, mm-hmm. for, uh, on that channel. We've even got the blow off steam channel where if you lose a bet or you're mad at us, you can just let us know. <laughs> and there's no judgment. And <laughs> you just post whatever you want in there and we move on our merry way. It's great. It's my favorite. Disc- it's my fa- it's our favorite channel uh, I that we, ha- yeah, it's that my we have too. in there. Like you, I you get just, excited. You, you wake up and <laughs> MF or some tennis player <laughs> blew it, <laughs> blew the third set or something. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, join us over at Discord. Uh, but really, if you guys could hit the like button here. And I do want to share something here uh, with, with everybody. So um, I know you guys are joining us for our uh, UFC breakdown. Uh, we do tons of sports as well. Uh, if you guys have been with us for a while, you know we're having uh, a, a great run. And that's the entire point of winning in the shadows is to take a small bankroll and build it up. So this is just an example of our last week. We had we had 16 plays total. Uh, went nine, uh, 10 and six for plus 9.4 units. And you can see 2024, uh, we're up 83 units for 6.1% ROI. Uh, I did a little bit of a deep dive breakdown on the recap where we are at basically one year from, uh, from August, we started with $10,000 and we've doubled it in one year. So, uh, that's kind of what you expect with, uh, the content and the plays that we have. So join us over at discord and, uh, hit the like button. Thanks so much for joining us on this one. Let's move on to Oban Elliott and Preston Parsons. My guy, Oban Elliott, uh, man, this guy's a trip. I don't think he's very good, Jim, but man, I love me an Oban Elliott fight. What do you expect (laughs) in this, in this fight? I'm sitting here trying to figure out why I haven't bet Preston Parsons yet. I've been thinking about it since I got up Monday morning. Why have I not bet this fight yet? Why have I not bet Preston Parsons? Why have I not bet Preston Parsons? And I still haven't. And maybe I'm going to regret it. But is this could be, uh, we'll get to it later. I don't think Oban Elliott's very good at all. He's at not all. very, let's just, let's just make it very, he's not. <laughs> yeah, he, not I don't think good. he has the wrestling, the grit, the toughness, the striking, 
anything to combat what Preston Parsons is going to throw at him. And I'm wondering, I don't understand this line either. Like, how are we under minus 200? Because he beat Val Woodburn? Val Woodburn? I, I mean, he, he's gotten absolutely rocked in his mm-hmm. contender series and his UFC fight yeah. against fighters that I think we would agree are worse than Preston Parsons. 100% worse than Preston Parsons. I mean, yes. he was dead to the world against Brito. I, I, I am going to push back on your toughness. I think he's pretty tough. I mean, his cardio and an energy surviving – Mm-hmm. Some of those, of course, you could just say he's pretty chinny because he keeps getting rocked in these fights. <laughs> yes. um, what do we like when we talk about the number one thing you say about a fighter is they're tough? It's bad. We don't want to bet on that guy. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's really bad. How how has Oban Elliott's last two fights gone the distance? That is a miracle. When you go back and watch them, I mean, just I don't know how those guys are. How those guys made it the distance, but I'm with you, man. I think Parsons has the advantage kind of everywhere. The wrestling is going to be huge. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Parsons is, is this possible? This is a really good nominee for the woulda, coulda, shoulda. Uh, if you go back and watch Oban Ellie, who just leaves his chin out there, he gets smoked in his fights, mm-hmm. and you're right. I mean, Val Woodburn was exhausted by the second round. Oban just kind of waltzes to a. To exactly. a win, to a win there. So, well, we go it, to Parsons, right? Parsons got knocked out by who was it? Um, so Daniel Rodriguez, Daniel Rodriguez knocked him out, now, but but that was against, a weight class. Yeah, and this win against Evan Elder's aging, aging nicely, very well. Trevin Giles, he's a veteran, and it went the distance. Split. It happens. One it happens. judge. We talk yes. about one judge changes one round, and that's a win all mm-hmm. of a sudden. So a beating Matthew Semmelsberger. That's a decent win. It's not a bad win. I mean, Semmelberger is still a UFC level fighter. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of my point is that I just don't know if Oban Elliott is a legit UFC fighter. So I like Parsons in this man, and I think it's a great number. I'm gonna find my way on him. I I, I just know I'm gonna. All right. Probably happen as soon as we're done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Moving on, Modestus Bukaskis and Marcin Procnio. Who do you like in this one? Bukaskis. I, I, I can't bet on Procnio, man. I can't. Um, he skated away, somehow got, did not get knocked out in his past couple fights. I still think he's got one of the worst chins in the division. He's got a snappy leg kick. And lucky for him, that's all he's needed <laughs> to get those two wins against William Knight, William Knight. and Devin Clark. Yep. This is not William Knight and Devin Clark. Bukaskis has skills, and I think he has enough skills to hurt Prakniao. Um, I think that he's going to come forward. Prakniao does much better when he can establish range, and I don't know if Bukaskis is going to let him establish range. And that chin is still a liability. I don't care what the recent results are. If you touch this man clean, he is going to go down. And if we go back and we look at Bukaskis here, the loss to Petrino, look, we liked Petrino going into that. He got checked by Anthony Smith, but he was doing great. Beat Zach Palga, which he should. Um, beats Tyson Pedro, who he should. Chuck Campbell, I got nothing to say about Chuck Campbell. I don't think anybody has anything to say about Chuck Campbell. But losing to Khalil Roundtree, Oleg Zaychuk in a split, which was a stand-up battle. Jimmy Crute, that one's ugly, but look how far back we're going. Yeah, you're We're going you're back to 2020. Yeah. This is a different fighter now. So I like Bukaskis on the money line. I'm not a fan about the the, the number. Um, but, yeah, I, I can't bet on Prakneo. Just can't. I like overs in this. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of fights on this card that I like overs. I thought Prakneo did a pretty good job stuffing some takedowns from Devin Clark. And Bukaskis fights at range, man. He, you know, he, he likes to stick a move. We correctly predicted that against Tyson Pedro, and that's kind of what he did was he used his speed to get around. I think he's going to be faster until, you know, he starts to get tired. After round one, I'm not sure who's going to have the, the power or the skill to get any type of finish. Mm-hmm. Um, I know the chin isn't great, but Koska's not a power puncher. He's not, you know, going to, he's not going to swing for the fences and land one of those huge, you know, one-shot powers. I think, I think they get a little bit tired. Um, and I think Bukaska ends up kind of pulling away late. I'm with you. Maybe Bukaskis by decision. Could um, be an interesting angle. Yeah, you know, a way to get a little bit better value. But I could see this just going to the judges and it just kind of being one of those blah fights where you're like, ah, 
Eh, it went the decision. I'm holding a Bukaskas ticket, and I'm a little bit worried. But um, I like overs. If I have to pick one, it's Bukaskas. But yeah, Bukaskas by decision might be, might be the way to go in that one. Colin Lochran and Jake Hadley. Speaking of overs, I mean, is there any is there any better one on the card than this one? We don't have to talk too deep about this one. We're in lockstep agreement here. Uh, I don't think Colin Lochran's that good, but he is tough. He's got a brick head. He's gonna <laughs> Dude, his it. head is... He's got a melon. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a melon. It's, it is a big target, but, man, mm-hmm. it's a granite. <laughs> it's I can see him pushing the wrestling and Hadley scrambling, and it's just tick, 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 time off the clock the whole time. I don't see a finish coming from either side. If a finish does happen, it's going to be unexpected and out of nowhere type deal. It's not going to be one guy dominating. This is going to be a back and forth fight. Um, I don't understand why Jake Hadley's doing this on short notice. He probably wants to get on the card and he's probably getting paid well and it's up there you go and all that good stuff. So, you know, we've seen recently these fighters that take these last minutes and want to get paid well. They have no problem holding on for dear life and getting that paycheck, don't they? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Taking the overs uh, fight to go the distance. Uh, Neither... Neither one of these guys have ever been finished in their pro or amateur career. Isn't that amazing? So there's Crazy. Jake Hadley. I mean, these guys don't lose a whole lot, but I mean, when you even go back to the amateur and you can't find any of these guys getting finished, I mean, how are they supposed to finish each other? Um, both of them should have enough energy um, to defend and last until, you know, the last round. He said, this is going to be a wrestling it'd be mm-hmm. it'll be there'll be some striking but it'll be clinch and I, these guys are not pure strikers um you know they're but they're both i think lockwood's a little bit better than you do i don't think he's making a championship run anytime soon but um i think they're both good enough to kind of cancel each other out and you end up with a very very long long fight so don't care who wins just make it to the judges mm-hmm uh, I don't think this next fight's going the distance. Molly McCann and Bruna Brazil. Molly, of course, is going to be the big favorite in front of that home crowd. What's your take on McCann and Brazil? In Brazil or against Brazil? Against Brazil, <laughs> yes. Um, I like Molly. However, <laughs> yeah, I'm not a... willing at this number. I feel like that's always the thing with Molly. It's like, I like Molly McCann, but, but... I just can't. I my question is is if Brazil has the ability to get Molly out of there. Now we've seen her give up submissions in the past and look lost on the ground, but in her defense, she's looked good. She's looked good on the ground. You know, she's getting better. Mm-hmm. I think this weight class is different. There's there's not going to be that big of a size advantage. Um, again, judges are going to be all over Molly. They're going to be all over Molly. She's going to get the benefit of the doubt with all these close rounds. You can be damn sure Molly McCann is going to win a round if it's close. Um, the question really, I think, is this over or under? I, I, I love the angle of the under two and a half and it at plus money. Normally, I like to have value on both sides. But, you know, are we just looking at a Molly McCann at this point in her career that she's either going to get the finish or she's going to take her ball and go home? I think that's, kind of, that's kind of what we've seen. Yeah, I think it's kill or be killed with her. I think she blitzes in the first round and try. I mean, look at it. Round one, round one, round one, round one. I mean, that's five fights in a row. It's it, a it, women's women's fight here. That's that's what we, this isn't heavyweight. Crazy. This isn't light. <laughs> you know, heavyweight. So, and I I I think that there's something to be said about you know, she was a decision machine until she wasn't. So something has changed. I don't know if it's the opponents. I don't think it's the opponents. I think it's. You get in front of that home crowd and she goes, you know, crazy and it's just a kill or be killed mentality and you're getting plus money at under two and a half. I love it. I, I just love it. I'm with you that I'm not sure Brazil, like, I don't think Brazil's going to knock out Molly, but Molly's shown some pretty bad ground game mm-hmm. um, at times and only takes one arm to hang out there to get arm barred or something. So I would lean Molly maybe inside the distance, but I just at plus money. I don't think there's a need to overthink it. I just take the the plus money at the under two and a half and just root for a finish. So I think uh, the change what Molly was her uh, finances. Well, yeah, and she flat out said it at one point. You know, she 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 was broke, and then she started. Finishing fights and building a persona for herself. Those bonuses. Now she's got and, Rolexes and 
and it's barstool really sports mm-hmm. behind her. And, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Let's take a look at Nathaniel Wood, Daniel Pineda, and Nathaniel Wood. Really, really big favorite. Uh, can we make a case for Daniel Pineda? Daniel Pineda is always live in the first two minutes of a fight. But it's got to be in those first two minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's okay. that simple. Um, 38 year old man. 38 year old. Yep. I'm, I'm not going there with a 38 year old. Not against Nathaniel Wood. Uh, Nathaniel Wood literally, I'm not, we said it jokingly, but to me, he needs to survive the first two minutes of this fight and then it's all his. It's all Nathaniel Wood from there. Uh, Pineda's going to try to throw those heavy leg kicks. I think Wood probably has just as good of leg kicks, and we've seen Pineda, just like we just said about Molly, say, I've had enough. I'm done. I got no cardio left. I'm done taking the beating. And he just gives up the finish. So I like Nathaniel Wood in this spot. I think he's safe to parlay. Uh, I trust this chin enough. I know this weight jump, people are concerned. They say that he's a small fit for this weight class, but Pineda's no monster. No, he's not. There's no, there's no five-inch height advantage and seven-inch reach advantage going on here. I think they're going to size up pretty well. And even though Wood is small, Wood is a absolutely shredded monster of nothing but muscle. Um, this, is, this is the fight where I think all the EPO on the card is between okay. the two of these guys. I mean... At first, I was worried with no USADA with Pineda because he failed twice. But then you, you look at Nathaniel Wood and you just say, that's not natural. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's yeah. pretty. So I think we're at an even playing field there. Uh, yeah, man, I like Wood in this spot. I think uh, if Wood's ever going to get a finish, even though he's been a decision machine, this is the fight for it to happen. Um, don't forget this this loss against uh, Muhammad. Uh, Naimov. Naimov did everything except hit Daniel Wood with a hammer. Mm-hmm. And they, like, need him in the, <laughs> the yes. ball several times. Mm-hmm. Egregious fence grabs that he got away with. Like, that was a I, – I had forgotten all about that because I was like, yeah, he did lose to Naimov. And then I went back watched, but I was like, oh, I remember how yeah. he lost yeah. to Naimov. So that loss does not really worry me that much. Uh, and I told you I watched uh, Daniel Pineda's interview – um, uh, and Pineda was like, yeah, just had a kid four months ago. So I'm taking a lot of time off spending time. Um, yeah, the gym, my gym didn't have power, you know, no lights for a week, but I wasn't there. I was in Denver cornering for somebody else. I, I was just like, what, wait, what? <laughs> You're a lot of moving the, parts going on. Yeah. And then the, parts. then the guy asked him, um, he was like, what's going to be your strategy? And Pineda's answer was, well, I'm going to finish him. I was like, okay, this sounds like a really well thought out plan. Okay, thanks very much for your in two your minutes. Insight. He better do he, it he in two minutes. In two minutes, yeah, like, like that. That was his big breakdown of the ball. I'm, I'm gonna finish him, man. Oh, and then he did say it could be on the ground or on the feet. It was like, as opposed to suspended in air, Daniel. True. Uh, True. So, uh, uh, Pineda is absolutely no no bet for me. It's juicy, but good parlay piece. Um, and I know we're. I, I don't know. Do you believe in the the all England <laughs> like parlay? Like parlay? Park and McKay and Wood. I believe in all of these, and we spoke about it last week with the Koreans to fade them. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you always get one. There's Whether one. Whether it's a win or a loss, there's one. So instead of trying to pick the ones that are going to win, you got to look at this and say, which one of the Englanders is going to lose? All right. Well, I, I think I know who's gonna. <laughs> okay, I got this one as a nominee, as a, a as potential loss here. Um, I, I'll go first on this one. I just, I think Giga keeps getting undervalued, man. I think we just keep underrating what what, what he is and what he does. This loss against Calvin Cater, he was winning until he tried a stupid kick, slip, fell down. Cater takes advantage and just kind of dominated. So he re- he really did beat him up. Uh, really good. So we see him take time off and he comes in against Caceres. I thought that was a really good performance from Giga. He controlled the fight, landed some incredible body shots. I, I wonder how Alex Caceres' ribs felt the next day. He, that, to take those shots was impressive for Caceres. It was, it, it really was. And I can just pick some holes in Ar- Arnold Allen here. Like he, okay. So he, he beats, Dan Hooker, uh, don't forget, Dan Hooker was, all, like, this close 
to getting smoked by Jalen Turner, who turns out is an absolute bonehead. So I'm not <laughs> sure this win is as great uh, as possible. Beats Yusef, that is not aging that great. No. Uh, Nick Lentz, eh. And then Calvin Cater hurts, get, you know, get, hurts his knee right off the bat. He jumps up for Holloway. Holloway wins the first four rounds. I mean, it, it was it was four zero going in the last one. I'll give him credit that he had energy to win the last round. His striking was okay against Holloway, but then against Ivloyev, man, Ivloyev grappling wins it, striking. He the, kicked his ass. Let's say what it is. I, they he, gave him a round, dominated. but I didn't see it. I yeah, didn't I just see it at all. He got dominated. yeah, yeah. So I'm looking at Arnold now, and I'm going, well. So what does he do well? It's not he's not it's not grappling, it's not wrestling. So you're gonna get in a striking match with Giga? And and I get Giga at, at plus I I don't know, man. Uh, if I'm looking at a kind of a little sleeper here, to me it's Giga Chikadze. What do you think? I'm lockstep with you, man. I am really afraid that Arnold Allen's career, his highlight, his high moment, is gonna be that five round against Max. <laughs> Where he and lost what, the first what four a rounds. Shame. Of- what a shame that would be <laughs> is that that's, the, that's the, the high moment of Arnold Allen's career. I just don't know what he is anymore. It's almost that's like great he lost point. his identity. He doesn't, that's a great he doesn't point. know what he is. Like, what are you? What are you good at? I couldn't at? tell you. How are you going to win fights? Yeah. Are you, are you, are you just going to be mediocre at everything and do the whole win-loss, win-loss thing for the rest of your career? Ar- Arnold Allen has to take a jump. And as far as I know, he's still training with his father, still at the same gym. I've spoke about this before. At some point in your career, when you hit this wall, this level of step up where you can't get over it, you need to go look other places. You have to go out and cross train with other people and develop different skills. Like if I would have heard that he went out to Hawaii and trained with Max Mm. after they fought, I'm all in on Arnold Allen. Are you kidding me? I'm okay. all in, but all I keep seeing is that he's in the same spot that he's always been doing the same thing he always has. And I don't think it's enough to get over this hump. Giga's a specialist. If he can't get it down on the ground, Giga will win the stand-up. He just will. The one thing that, that gives me pause on Giga is this is Southpaw versus Orthodox. So this is going to change the Giga kick. Giga's best weapon, that body kick. I do believe that Giga is a good enough and smart enough striker that he can throw that from both sides, but it's going to take away the power side that he throws. So that money kick of his right to the liver is not going to be available unless Arnold Allen switches stance. That being said, is the last piece I have on this. If we're watching this fight live and you notice that every time Arnold Allen switches his stance, Giga is throwing that kick, you are live betting Giga. Mm. Because that means that his game plan is on point. Because that's really what he should be looking for. He's got to find a way to get that off there because that's his best weapon. Um, I don't think if he can get it off, he can win. So I plan on live betting this, but Arnold Allen dropping the ball? Yeah, I'm with you, man. It could happen. 100% can happen in this fight. Yeah. Moving on to the main card. At the end, we're going to do our parlay buster and our woulda, coulda, shoulda bets of the week. This one's fascinating. I can't wait to watch Christian Leroy Duncan versus Gregory Rodriguez. What do you think about this one? This is my England buster. Right oh, here. okay. So, so Andy's looking at Arnold Allen. I'm looking at Christian Leroy Duncan. I don't think either of these two guys are safe uh, to put in your big parlays, your, your four-leggers. Hopefully, you're not doing any more than four-leggers. Um, please don't do more than four Please leggers. don't do. Please don't do. Like, like, you, e- you either try and do Cody Safdick's PRP where you get yeah. all of them, or you're uh, two. Man. Stick to two. <laughs> please don't do. Please don't do four yeah. leggers. Yeah, I'll push it to three, but yeah, we're stopping there. Um, I like Gregory Rodriguez as the underdog, and I missed the boat. The line has already moved. He was yep. one seventy a day ago. He's one twenty now. <clears throat> I don't like how Christian Leroy Duncan uh, reacts to shots. I think he exposes his back way too much, and I think Gregory Rodriguez is gonna have absolutely no problem entertaining the wrestling game if he gives his back up to Rodriguez. He can most certainly, I can see this ending up against the fence with him just leaning on him. You know, when, when, if you remember watching Duncan's fights, when he gets a leg kick, he turns like 60 degrees around and just walks away (laughs) slowly. And all it takes is somebody to dive on his hips and they're going to get his back. 
Um, I think he's going to do something stupid in this fight as well. We're going to see a lot of spinning, flashy stuff that's going to leave him exposed. And if he doesn't catch Gregory Rodriguez early, I could see Rodriguez taking over. That being said, what I really like on this is the over one and a half. I think Duncan plays on the outside and tries to keep distance for the first round and has Rodriguez chasing him. And I wouldn't be shocked. And even if we do get some grappling going, that's going to eat time too. So I really like that over one and a half in this fight. I think this fight could end up going from wanting to be uh, an awesome fight. I know these guys are finishers. It could end up being a bit of a snooze fest till it's not. Like we'll probably get a knockout out of nowhere with a really crappy fight. <laughs> I was surprised to see one and a half and not two and a half, but then you go mm -hmm. back and you look and you go, okay, you, you, Rodriguez finishes around three, finish to Lul and finish. So I, I, I guess I get it, but I'm with you that the matchup does kind of scream they cancel each other out a little bit. And, you know, make no mistake, Claudio Ribeiro, the trash. fight's trash, not going the distance. <laughs> Tallulah, that fight's definitely not trash. going the distance. <laughs> yeah, not going the distance. Uh, we predicted his loss against Petrosian. So we've had a good read on mm -hmm. on Duncan. Dusko I, as well. You were heavy on him against Dusko. Yeah, well, it's, correctly, yeah, right? it's Dusko. Dusko. Yes. Uh, and yeah, the knee injury. But yeah, we get the win there. So I'm with you. That I, I wonder if Rodriguez does try and use um, the the wrestling. He had basically no success against Brad Tavares. and realized I'm just going to blast him into next week. Um, and that, <laughs> that, that's, how, that's how I'm going to win. Uh, I'm with you on the over one and a half. Stylistically, I think it matches up pretty well. Um, one of the reasons why I like Gregory Rodriguez, take a look at his UFC career. He's got a weird one going. Um, so a split decision loss to Petrosian. Again, one judge changes one round, and that's a win. This loss to Bruno Ferreira is really turning into one of the more crazy, inexplicable... Anomaly. We didn't believe it when we saw it live, and now we really don't believe it anymore. <laughs> Bruno Ferreira lands one jab, and he's out. He's mm -hmm. out cold. Um, maybe it was just from this war against Chitty. It was just leftover lingering, uh, you know, effects. Just, but, yeah. I, you, you know, it's just one of those really strange losses. So when you look at his UFC career, I mean, this guy has lost a split decision to Petrosian, who does that to guys. And then just a really, really strange um, knockout. So I'm with you on, on Rodriguez. I'm not sure Duncan has what it takes and has the maturity to kind of figure out Rodriguez. Um, and you're right. We just... <laughs> those those weird punches and kicks and stuff, like, they look cool when they land. When they don't, mm -hmm. it looks terrible. And it looks really bad to the judges. So... Home, tor home turf, but uh, the value is absolutely on Rod Rodriguez as a uh, plus money. So, All right, Bobby Green, Patty Pimblett. Now we're getting into some some, some big-time crowd action here. Bobby Green, Patty Pimblett, how do you have this one going down? Patty Pimblett wins by decision. Pretty cut and dry in this. Uh, Bobby Green just beat Jim Miller and beat him quite handily. Still got wobbled. He's been wobbled in every single fight. When he hasn't been knocked out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He always gets wobbled. Uh, younger fighter. I can't buy into Bobby at this age anymore. Um, we just spoke about this last week with Bill Algio, where even if you've had a good read on a fighter, it gets to a certain age where you just have to say, I'm out. I'm out. I have to look at a different way to bet this guy. And I loved betting on Bobby Green. Bobby Green, by decision, for a while there, or fight goes the distance in all Bobby Green's fights, were, was, was killer. That was a great bet. Look at that streak. I know. It was I mean, great. It was, it was just set it and forget it, right? And, and then, then his all career of a sudden kind of was... changed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Then it wasn't. So uh, I don't – Patty could get a finish. I don't think Bobby is going to knock out uh, Patty Pimblett. If he couldn't finish Jim in that last fight, when he had him beat up 10 ways till Sunday, it, it just <laughs> – why is he going to finish Patty? Because Patty leaves his chin out. I don't think Bobby hits hard enough to be a knockout artist. He just doesn't. Um, if this gets to the grappling, we've seen Bobby, who is a great defensive wrestler, really struggle once fights start grappling. Wrestling and grappling are two different things. Once this hits the mat, I think Bob Patty's going to have a huge advantage. So I, I would be interested in like maybe Patty by submission decision. See what I, I think you could even play him straight. I mean, it's a pick 'em fight. Yeah, I just you're gonna give me a pick 'em number with a 38 year old. I'm gonna take the younger fighter. 
Yeah. You know, this could this could look like a huge discount mm-hmm. after this fight. That's where I'm at. Patty Pimblett. He's had some strange fights, Bobby Green. Like you said, he, Jim Miller, God love him, pretty old, uh, mm-hmm. gets absolutely murdered by Jalen Turner. This Grant Dawson fight, we didn't get to see if Dawson was going to, you know, ragdoll him for three rounds. Credit to Green, gets the flash knockout, but you can't take anything away from that. We didn't learn anything. Tony Ferguson, you're not learning anything, you know, that from that one. Fight. The Jared Gordon head clash, and then he gets knocked out by Dober. Makachev, you're not learning that much. I know it's just been a strange run for Bobby Green's uh career. I mean you go from you go from Ally Quinta to Nazra Hackers to Islam Makachev. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just it's a very, very strange run here. I would ever I would lean ever so slightly Patty. I'm not gonna get there. Just the age, you're right. I'm just not betting on these older guys. Yeah. It just um and I think Bobby Green's antics in the ring are not going to go well with the judges in front of the home crowd. If Bobby Green does his, and this fight is going to be a circus. Mm-hmm. Like the walkouts are going to be a circus. The the press conferences are going to be a circus. And as soon as Green, re- you know, hears it from the crowd, he's going to start taunting and do all this stuff. And you don't know how it's going to go with the judges. So I'm not betting it. I think, I think it's pretty foolish to actually bet this one because you just don't know what, what it's going to look like. I like the over. I like a fight to go the distance. I don't care who wins. That would be the way that, that I would look at it. Uh, Tom Aspinall, Curtis Blades, a little bit of a rematch here as Aspinall gets hurt. Jim, before you break down this fight, is the injury to Tom Aspinall the best thing that could have happened to Tom Aspinall? A thousand percent. Isn't that weird how life works I don't sometimes? even have to think about that. That is a... Th- when I first heard that interview, and I, I gave you a shout after that, where he's like, yeah, you know, my knee's been hurt my whole career. Well, well wait, what? What? Come again? Like, you're, a, you're a title contender in the UFC's heavyweight division, and you've had knee problems your whole life, and the only reason you didn't want to fix it is because you didn't want to take time off? It's the best thing that could have happened to him, to get that squared Amazing. away and get your knee right. Like, it's the best thing, and I don't think this fight changes any... At, at all from the first one. Tom Aspinall was getting ready to put Curtis Blades into orbit that first fight. <laughs> he was doing whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted. And I'm hearing people say, well, Blades was hanging with him. Blades touched him. Curtis Blades is not a striker. I don't know how many times we have to talk about this, but when Curtis Blades decides that he's a striker, he loses fights. Okay? <laughs> he loses fights. He is not a striker. Um... You can't be a striker with your knockout is Chris Dawkus. Okay, everybody knocks out a Dawkus. Couldn't knock out Jarzinho Rosenstrike. Couldn't even finish him on the ground. There's no easier guy to finish when it comes to grappling than him. And this Almeida fight, he was losing. Oh, Almeida losing. hung on to his single <laughs> for way too long, ate about six elbows, and said, I'm done. To the back, okay, to the side I'm of done. the head. It, it wasn't even mm-hmm. like... It wasn't, a, it wasn't a flash knockout on the feet. It wasn't he set no. up something good. Almeida just did a dumb. He made a mistake. Dumb he move. Mistake. One mistake cost him. Yeah. And we, we yeah. knew that was coming with Almeida, and it took an experienced wrestler, not a striker, to show that. I think Tom Aspinall ends this fight in two rounds. People are saying that minus 400 was crazy, and yeah, nobody wants to lay minus 400. I get it. But the opening number on this I thought was a discount, a massive mm. discount. I know that he was only minus 140 the first fight. We've learned so much about Tom Aspinall as far as his uh, well-rounded game. The guy's got great wrestling, great striking, great submission game, smart, good game planning. You know, we've seen him go into the second round. At least we know that. I just don't see where Blades wins this thing, man. The only way Blades wins this is for some reason he can hold Tom down for five rounds. That's not happening. It's not going like Almeida was easily controlling Blades. I was amazed at how mm-hmm. bad Blades looked. Yeah, at the at the wrestling <laughs> in in that one. So I don't think he does it against Tom Aspinall. I'm with you that Aspinall uh, gets the fish. I think he's just too much um, for him. So. He's the best heavyweight on the planet right now. Absolutely. Forget about John Jones and old. There's C-Pan. a reason Jones wants nothing to do with exactly. him. Exactly. There's, there, there's a big time reason for that. So we we haven't seen John Jones dodge somebody like he's dodging Tom Aspinall right now. Absolutely. Um, all right, last fight on the card, and then we'll get to our parlay buster and our woulda, coulda, shoulda bets. 
Leon Edwards, Blah Muhammad, who you got? I don't want to see this fight. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> Me neither. This is another prime case of the UFC just screwing us with scheduling here. Can we switch these two title fights? Like, just switch them. Why is this the main event? I don't even think that this is in my top. Like, if I'm ranking fights that I'm most excited to watch, this is an early prelim. I don't want to mm-hmm. watch five rounds of Blah Muhammad and Leon Edwards. I don't. No. I don't. They're both low. Vo- I, 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 I know I just asked you. What you think? But they're both low volume. Um, no, I mean, we're, Bilal, we we agree with everything on this fight. Yeah, I mean, like Bilal Muhammad does have more volume than Leon Edwards. I will I will say that, and I think that's mm-hmm. it's pretty basic. That's what this fight comes down to. Bilal Muhammad is going to throw more and land more. Leon Edwards is probably going to have the more damage, and his shots are going to have a little bit more on them. But other than that, it's going to be a chess match, which I guess if you're into that, but. I mean, I don't what to, what <laughs> this late at night. I don't want to see a chess match. I want to see a Tom Aspinall fight. Mm-hmm. So, um, the only way I can play this is to take Bilal Muhammad, who continues to be undervalued just because it's plus money. Mm-hmm. I would lean that Leon Edwards gets it. I don't know. There's something about Leon Edwards. Like Leon Edwards, don't, don't forget going into the this first Kamara Usman fight. Leon Edwards was kind of a little bit of a punching bag in the MMA world, a little bit. Like, I can't really take him serious. He's not going to win the big one. And now, just everything's changed. (laughs) Now he's feeling himself. And (laughs) um, I don't know. I want nothing to do with it. Overs is the only way I could play this one. Is that the only bet we could do in this? I think you can go overs or you're playing below. Uh, I do think this is going to the decision. And in a five-round main event, we've seen some real wacky scorecards. Yes, we have. Where, I mean, like, look at that Rose Cortez fight. Somebody had that as a one-round fight. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) What did Cortez win? The walk to the octagon? (laughs) I don't know what she won. Um, I mean, look at these overs from (laughs) Bilal. All of them are overs. Everybody's an over. Um, I think the plus five and a half on... Bilal is a great way if your books have it. Because if this is going the distance, I think we're definitely going to have one judge that might even have Bilal winning the fight at the end of it. Um, That's a lot of rounds to get right there. So I like it. Um, I'm probably not going to bet anything on this fight. If anything, I'll be taking overs. Over two and a half, over three and a half, over four. We'll see. But I also don't believe that Leon Edwards has fought anybody legitimate in the, since the first Usman fight. I think that second Usman fight was just Usman doing it for the company. And Colby Covington, we saw it. It's done. God, did he look horrible. It's done. Colby Covington's done. Dunsky. And where, where was the finishing of Leon in that fight? <laughs> Non-existent. He could have ended that fight whenever he wanted and just let a beat up. Uh, Colby's insides were mush in that fight. <laughs> mush. And it, it's, he's not going to do that to Bilal. Bilal is better than that. So it's Bilal or the plus or the fight goes the distance. I can't put any money on Leon. I just I believe he's almost a paper champion at this point. Um, we're going to get to the parlay buster here. Let's remind everybody we got our 5% play of the week that's up cross-sport parlay. Love what we've been doing, man. Uh, Jib, we, we kind of base our week around this one play, one big play of the week and then kind of, you know, just kind of base our week around that, and it's been working nine and two in the last eleven weeks. So uh, yeah, it's worked out really, really well. We're on a really, really nice run, up eighty four units in two thousand twenty four. We're up ninety one in uh, two thousand twenty three. So uh, go grab that over at wagertalk dot com uh, wt slash al. Let's do the parlay buster now. Remember, this is who do we think everyone's going to be on and it's going to trip everyone up and what's going to be the play that everyone puts in. We're not just picking a play. Oh, you know, that one's going to bust some parlays. What's the one that's going to wreck everybody, Jim? What do you think? Mm. Scroll down for me. Yeah, this is a tough... We, this we, is we a don't tough... have these ever figured out beforehand. It's kind of like we look at them and see. Yeah. Parlay buster. Hmm, going to have them in everything. Got to have them in everything. It is a tough one. I don't think it's Molly. 
I still come back to Leroy Duncan and Arnold Allen. Uh, those are the two I could see dropping the ball from the the England side. <laughs> I got <laughs> Arnold Allen. I, 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 nobody likes Giga. No, nobody wants to bet on Giga. <laughs> like, I mean, they got Arnold Allen, who's lost two in a row. He's, he doesn't have a grappling, wrestling advantage over Giga, and it ends up being a striking match, and we've just seen... Arnold Allen not do too good, and Giga just knows how to pull out these these wins there at the end. I think it's Arnold Allen. I've seen nobody pick Giga. See, oh, Arnold Allen's going to be back. And I'm like, eh, back from what? Where was he? So <laughs> but my, my vote is the is Arnold Allen as the parley buster. You're going with Christian Leroy Duncan? Yeah, yeah. I was going to save Gregory for my, sh- my uh, shoulda, woulda, coulda at 170, but at 120 it doesn't make as much sense. So I'll okay. go with Leroy Duncan to, to screw around and find out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and lose to RoboCop here. <laughs> Either All by right. decision or, or a, a TKO submission when he's done doing his tap dance in the ring. <laughs> woulda, coulda, shoulda bet. This is uh, the bet where at the end of the fight, we're just like, why didn't we lay the moral goods on that? We hit it last week, and it was a classic woulda, coulda, shoulda. The Peterson-Usman fight to go the distance. I didn't bet one penny on it, even though I was screaming from the rafters (laughs) all week long that this fight was going (laughs) to go go the distance, Um, and it did. So what's what's the fight that we're looking at this week where at the end we're just like, God, why didn't we lay the farm on that one? What is it? All right, I'm going different with this one because I got to start hitting these if I'm giving them out. Okay. I'm going to go different. My woulda, coulda, shoulda is going to be Nathaniel Wood to get a finish against Daniel Pineda. And I think we're going to look back and say, why didn't we bet Wood the farm on Wood to end the fight <laughs> against a guy who always loses by finish? After there's a hurricane, he's got no power, his gym's out, he has a baby, four months old. It just goes on and on. 38 years old, in enemy territory. There's too many red flags on the Pineda side. And I know Wood's not a finisher, but, you know, when Pineda gasses at the 2 minute 15 second mark and you go, uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Could yeah. Could look like easy money. I'm going to go with... I think we're all going to be standing there going, why didn't we lay the farm on Mick Parkin over Lucas Bresky, who's not like looked that. good. He's looked terrible after the steroid bust. His one win. He, I, this guy was given such a gift. I mean, this was a gift from the from the UFC gods that they gave him, Walter Walker. <laughs> like, I mean, this guy got knocked out by Waldo Cortez Acosta. Like, dominated by Car- Carl Williams. Um, has no cardio. Going up against a guy that wins every round three. I think we might be sitting at the. I think we might be sitting in here, watching Mick Park and just piece him up on the feet while Bresky's taking deep breaths in round three, going park, watching Parkin waltz to a decision win. So uh, Mick Parkin is going to be my woulda, coulda, shoulda. And I am betting him this week. I'm not, I'm not letting this one slip away. Uh, I bet I'm, We are betting both of our woulda, coulda, shoulda. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm betting not, mine for sure, and I'm going to bet yours as well. Not losing <laughs> any more money on those. So. Thanks for joining us, guys. Don't forget to join the Discord. Join in the free plays, free discussion. Uh, I'll put the link in the description as well. We will be live on this very channel watching UFC 304, going over some live plays, predictions, and in-fight wagers. Best of luck. Good luck on your plays, and we will see everyone later. We'll see you Saturday.